Venezuela was once South America's richest country. Now it's in turmoil. Here's how we got here. Juan Guaido declared himself acting president of Venezuela in January 2019. Venezuela, though, already had a president, Nicolas Maduro. The socialist leader has led the country since dictator Hugo Chavez's death in 2013. Maduro had just been sworn into his second six-year term earlier in January, but opposition boycotts and allegations of voter fraud tainted his election. The National Assembly, controlled by the opposition, did not recognize the results. U.S. President Donald Trump recognized Guaido as Venezuela's legitimate president and praised his plan to hold new elections. Maduro immediately accused the United States of trying to orchestrate a coup from Washington, D.C., and he gave the U.S. 72 hours to remove its diplomats. In January, thousands of Venezuelans marched in the streets. They called out Maduro's corruption and demanded he step down. So who is Juan Guaido? The 35-year-old engineer is the newly named head of Venezuela's National Assembly. But he's been involved in opposition activities since college when Chavez was running the country. Guaido founded the Popular Will Party in 2009 with mentor and opposition leader Leopoldo Lopez. In 2011, he joined the National Assembly. Guaido was reportedly shot with non-lethal rounds by government forces in 2017 during anti-government protests in Vargas, his home state. He was named president of the National Assembly on January 5, 2019. Earlier this year, Guaido was momentarily detained by the government, but he was soon released. In February, he was asked by the CBC why he hadn't been arrested yet. Sobre todo cuando en Venezuela hay más de 350 presos políticos, hay asesinados, eh, políticos torturados, exilados, secuestrados, entre otras cosas. Since declaring himself acting president, Guaido's pledged to work with Venezuela's main business group and said he would end the persecution of private business. To that end, Guaido reportedly told Senator Marco Rubio he would name a new board for state-owned oil company Sitco Petroleum Corporation. Venezuela's Supreme Court, which supports Maduro, recently hit Guaido with a travel ban and froze his bank accounts. So how did we get here? Venezuela has the largest oil reserves on the planet, and yet nearly 90% of the country's 32 million people live in poverty. When Chavez took office in 1999, the country was producing about 3.5 million barrels of oil a day. Since then, the country's oil production has fallen off a cliff and stands at 1 million barrels per day. Meanwhile, hyperinflation is predicted to hit 10 million percent in 2019, and the country's currency is virtually worthless. One dollar is the equivalent of 248,521 Venezuelan bolivars. At least three million people have fled the country in the last five years, as food and medicine shortages have worsened. Doctors can't treat simple infections, much less people with more serious conditions. To make matters worse, Maduro has refused offers of aid from the U.S., saying accepting U.S. aid was a precursor to invasion. So far, dozens of people have died in the unrest. Meanwhile, a poll taken last fall showed more than 9 million Venezuelans only eat once a day. A similar number said they ate nothing or close to nothing at least one day a week. What's the world doing about it? The United States, the European Union, and most of Central and South America support Guaido, while China, Russia, Turkey, Cuba, Bolivia, Iran, and Nicaragua stand behind Maduro. Venezuela owes a total of about $100 billion to outside creditors. About $20 billion of that debt is held by China and another $2.3 billion by Russian oil company Rosneft. There's some question about whether those debts remain valid if Maduro is replaced. Meanwhile, Russian support is seen as vital to Maduro's survival. Russia has reportedly stepped in several times to help Venezuela stave off default. But if Putin were to allow a Venezuelan default, Russia could claim a lien on Sitco. Maduro offered Russia a 49.9% stake in the company after securing a loan in 2016. Last December, Russian bombers landed in Venezuela. The move was welcomed by Maduro's supporters, which included the military, but drew strong criticism from the U.S. Trump made it clear during his State of the Union address the U.S. supported Guaido. We stand with the Venezuelan people in their noble quest for freedom, and we condemn the brutality of the Maduro regime, whose socialist policies have turned that nation from being the wealthiest in South America into a state 
of abject poverty and despair. Trump had previously refused to rule out military intervention in Venezuela, saying all options are on the table. As a result, Venezuela recently conducted military exercises. Maduro said the country was preparing to defend itself against the U.S. What happens if Guaido takes over? For now, high-ranking Venezuelan officials, including the military, remain supportive of Maduro. But political analysts believe that could change under escalating international pressure. If Guaido takes control of the government, there won't be widespread default, but nobody is going to get paid immediately. The International Monetary Fund will likely take the lead in what would be one of the largest and most complicated sovereign debt restructurings ever. Venezuela will essentially have to be rebuilt completely. Fortunately, Venezuela has 300 billion barrels of oil, as well as underground reserves of gold, iron ore, and other natural resources. Those resources assure that countries who risk helping Venezuela will likely be paid back. Meanwhile, Juan Guaido has called for more protests and insisted a starting point for any dialogue must include Maduro's exit.